Let's take a look at this balance wheel. When you push forward, it works just fine. But when you push backward, it just gets stuck at a certain angle. So my question is, what caused this issue? Later in this video, I'm gonna use the 3D model to show you how the balance wheel and escapement system work together and how this happens. If you stick around until the end, I believe you'll walk away with a much deeper understanding of these systems. First, let's talk about the balance wheel structure. You probably know there's a tiny little thing which is called impulse due on a balance wheel. When the balance wheel swing back and forth, the impulse due slots into the pallet fork. It pushes the pallet fork to swing to the other side, and then the impulse due separates from the fork. When the balance wheel swings back, the impulse due slots back into the pallet fork again. So is this back and forth motion slotting in and separating. It seems like a perfect system, right? But have you ever thought about what happens if the system get hit by an external force? I'll tell you, the whole thing can get messed up. Here's why. When the impulse due separates from the pallet fork, if the watch takes a hard hit from the side, the pallet fork can swing out of control to the other side, like this. Then, when the impulse jewel tries to return to its normal position, it gets blocked by the missile line pallet fork. That's what we call overbank. It just basically stops the watch from running because the impulse jewel cannot interact with the pallet fork anymore. But don't worry, the master watchmakers thought of this a long time ago. They added a little safety feature, a guard pin right above the pallet fork. They also added an extra layer to the balance wheel with a notch in it. So if the pallet fork tries to swing out of control, the guard pin stops it. The fork can only swing freely when the balance wheel is back in its normal position and the notch lines up with the guard pin. This design solved the problem of the impulse jewel getting knocked out of place by side impacts. But here's the catch. Why does the pallet fork still deray sometimes? Well, the issue isn't with the original design. It's something we often overlook. It is vertical impacts. Let's look at the balance wheel structure again. There's a small gap between the balance staff and the plate jewel in a vertical direction. This gap lets the balance wheel move smoothly, but it also means the balance wheel can bounce a little vertically. Normally the bounce is tiny and it doesn't cause any problems. But if the balance wheel bounces too much vertically, things will go wrong. The balance staff sits right next to the plate jewel, which is held in place by a shock absorber ring. When the balance wheel bounces vertically, the shock absorber ring bends outward to absorb the energy. Kind of like how a bulletproof vest absorbs the energy of a bullet. The harder the bounce, the more the shock absorber ring bends, and the more the balance wheel bounces. If the bounce gets too big, the guard pin can slip free from the safety roller, and the whole thing derails. Now, there are two ways this can happen. Let's use this picture as an example. First, the balance wheel bounces upward and the guard pin slips free from the safety roller. If this happens, you're actually in luck because this kind of impact usually doesn't damage the parts. You can just take the balance wheel out, put it back in, and it'll work again. But honestly, this doesn't happen too often because the shock absorber ring can only bend so much, which limits how much the balance wheel can bounce. The second scenario is more common and worse. The balance wheel bounces downward and the roller jewel hits the guard pin, bending it out of shape. Once the guard pin is bent, it can't do its job anymore. So even a small impact, whether from the side or vertically, can cause the watch to overbank. And here's the kicker. The guard pin doesn't even need to bend much to cause overbanking. In theory, it only needs to bend by the thickness of the safety roller, which is just about, oh, uh, let me check. Okay, 0 0.13 millimeters. You might be thinking, why not just make the safety roller thicker to prevent this? Well, technically, we could, but a thicker safety roller would make the balance wheel taller, which would make the whole movement thicker, 
and in a watch, you know, vertical space is super precious. Just imagine if a Rolex or Mariner had a thicker movement, but a watch case stayed the same size, what would happen? Yeah, it'll squeeze the internal space. To keep the watch the same thickness, we have to make the inner walls of the top and bottom of the watch case thinner. Things like the back cover and a watch crystal also need to be made thinner. But if we do that, the watch's waterproof ability will get worse. And being waterproof is one of the really big selling points of a Rolex. So from my perspective, watchmaking is sometimes an odd compromise. You can't possibly force all these advantages into a watch because improving the performance in one aspect sometimes means sacrificing something else. So it's crucial to balance pros and cons according to the positioning of brands. Well, that's all for today. If this video can help you appreciate the beauty of timepieces from the perspective of mechanical principles, I'm thrilled. I mean, that's exactly why I made this channel. Also, in the future, I'll share some exclusive watchmaking knowledge once in a while. Okay, if you watched this far, please do me a favor and give me a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel, then go ahead and subscribe, and I'll appreciate that. I'll see you in the next time.